Welcome back, this is Joe and Janet with Grow Shop. As we continue our series on gear motor basics, we're explaining the two methods for pairing motors and reducers to create the optimal gear motor. In our previous video, we looked at how to select a reducer. Now we'll use those specifications to size a motor based on the application's speed and torque requirements. There are three to five requirements for selecting a motor for the gearbox. The motor nameplate speed and torque, the efficiency curve and the speed torque curve are needed for all motor types, while the breakdown torque and pull-up torque are also needed when considering an AC motor. When pulling the nameplate speed and torque data, you need to know that every manufacturer establishes their motor ratings using different criteria. So make sure you ask a lot of questions and understand the motor ratings you are using. Now it's time to take the gearbox output requirements and match them to a motor. These equations are used to take the output speed and output torque of the gearbox that has been chosen and use those values to calculate what the optimal motor output will be. First, calculate motor speed, then calculate motor torque. Notice in the equations that the gearbox ratio has an impact on both the motor speed and torque. This is important because when it comes time to select a motor, the calculations might indicate a large, slow motor for the application, by simply increasing the reducer ratio, the motor size could be reduced. Unfortunately, this means each time you adjust the ratio, you have to restart your gearbox calculations. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves here with motor size, so let's back up and show how to select a motor from the speed and torque requirements. Here is a speed and efficiency versus torque curve for a DC motor. Typically, manufacturers will mark the rated speed and torque on the curve, which usually gives you the maximum allowable torque. If a motor runs at a torque lower than its rating, the efficiency drops off sharply. As an example, for this particular motor, you can see from the red or hot line that the motor can run at 2400 RPM at 3.75 inch pounds of torque with a corresponding efficiency of about 70%. The maximum rated torque and speed are determined by the motor manufacturer's testing at a given voltage. This rating is limited by the temperature rise, which is dictated by the UL class. I'd like to point out that we use the hot curve for our calculations, since these values will simulate real-life operating conditions. Failure to take heat into consideration is one of the most common mistakes we'll discuss in a later video. Let's take a quick look at the impact of peak motor torques on the potential for gearbox damage. From the DC motor's speed torque curve, we determine the motor stall torque. But for AC motors, the maximum torque is called breakdown torque. These maximum motor torques need to be converted to a gearbox output torque. The maximum output torque needs to be compared to the maximum torque requirement of the application. Depending on the severity of the yield potential, you may need to, you guessed it, restart your reducer calculations. Another issue to consider when using AC motors in an application is pull-up torque. Pull-up torque is the minimum torque that will be produced during startup. The issue here is the motor may not be able to start in the application, but once it gets going, it functions properly. A good example of this might be an AC gear motor that's driving a loaded conveyor belt. To ensure the motor can start, the pull-up torque of the motor needs to be converted to a gearbox output torque. Then compare the gearbox output torque to the motor's startup torque needed in the application, combined with the static torque in the reducer. By this point, we have calculated several variables for the reducer, motor, and ultimately the gear motor. To simplify these calculations, we've developed a piece of software here at GrowShop called the STP Conversion Calculator. As you might have guessed, STP stands for speed, torque, and power. There are two versions of the calculator available and they both use the formulas we've discussed and convert units automatically. The basic online calculator is accessible on our website and can be used for quick calculations. For the more detailed calculations we've been discussing, we have a free downloadable desktop version and have provided links to both of the calculators below. The final step after the calculations are complete is to make sure the motor and gearbox interfaces are compatible. You'll need the dimensional drawings for each to do this. That wraps up method one. Let's review our chart. We determined our application speed torque requirements and selected a reducer. Then we calculated the motor speed and torque to determine our reducer ratio. Next, we selected our motor and calculated the motor's speed, torque, and efficiency to match our calculations for the reducer's ratio. 
The arrow indicates the recalculations we discussed for when adjustments need to be made for reducer ratio and motor size. Stay tuned. As we will see, our second method is a much easier process. Check out the links below for our STP conversion calculator and gear motor selection chart. For more information about GrowShop or any of our gear motor products, check out our website at www.growshop.com.